Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. This series of videos is based on the advanced information released by the exam boards ready for the 2022 GCC exam papers. This advanced information gives detailed information about what will be appearing on each of the three papers and will help you focus your revision on the topics that will definitely be coming up. Now, you can find all this material yourself on the exam board websites, which I'll link for you below. It's freely available and can be downloaded by anyone. So why do you need to watch this video when you could just go read that instead? Well, for those of you not simply horrified by the words, read it yourself. The information provided by the board is aimed at exam centres and is, act is actually not very student friendly. It requires a bit of interpretation and knowledge of the syllabus. So in these videos, I'll be summarising this information for you, telling you exactly what topics you need to be revising for each paper. I'll also be drawing on my experience of previous papers to give you my best guess for the type of questions you might expect. I think it will be well worth your time watching it all the way through. Below the video, I'll provide links to example exam questions and compilations on each of the topics mentioned to help you get on top of any areas you are not confident with. I've also created a playlist of these question compilations for each specific exam paper to help you focus your revision prior to each exam. There may be a few gaps currently, but I'll be working to fill those in between now and the exams. So if you're not yet subscribed, why not do that now and hit the bell so you'll be notified when these and other resources are uploaded. Now, if you find this video helpful, please do give it a like. This really helps me out. Also, why not share the video with your teacher and your friends, as I'm sure they will also find it useful. Let's get into it. Welcome along to this video review of the advanced information that's been put out by the exam boards ahead of this year's AQA exam. In this video, we're going to be looking at AQA paper one. I'm going to go through each strand in turn, and there are six strands all together, number, ratio, algebra, geometry, probability, and statistics. I'm going to kick off with number. Right, so in the number strand, uh, the advanced information for paper one says decimal arithmetic. Uh, so you need to know how to multiply, divide, add, and subtract um, numbers with decimals. So just remember to align your decimal points. Fraction arithmetic, so you've been able to multiply, divide, add and subtract fractions and mix numbers. Fraction of a number, so multiplying a whole number by a fraction. Value as a fraction of another. Okay, so that's taking one number and expressing it as a fraction of another. So like putting, um, you know, if you've got 15 out of 20 in a test, write that as a fraction and cancel it down. Recurring decimals as fractions. So there's an algebraic technique for that, isn't there? So you have to say x is equal to your uh, recurring decimal, then multiply up, okay? So percentages operator, that's going to be using multipliers and things like that to find percentages. Laws of indices, so knowing how to combine numbers with the same base, adding the indices, and if you're multiplying, subtracting, and so on. Also, finding 27 to the power of minus two-thirds, something like that. Standard form conversion and calculation. So you've been able to take a number, write it in standard form, or take a number in standard form, be able to write it as a number, and also to be able to do some calculations with it. So like adding two numbers in standard form or multiplying two numbers in standard form or dividing, okay? And third simplification. So taking a third and breaking it down into its most simple form. Uh, so in those sort of questions you're looking for uh, either for square factors that you can uh, break your numbers up into. So root 50, for instance, is 25 times 2, and then you can root the 25 part, can't you? Or you might be have to also rationalize denominators. So that's the other sort of question you might get. Okay, so that's the number section. Uh, over to ratio, quite a small list for ratio uh, for paper one. Ratio in its simplest form, you can cancel down ratios very similar to you can cancel down fractions. It's a very similar skill. Proportion problem. There's a whole range of different ratio problems that you might get out there. I've, I've got some videos on, uh, on compilations of a range of ratio questions. And if you're struggling in that, I definitely recommend you going through those. Okay, that's it really for ratio. On to algebra. Quite a long list for algebra. Lots of algebra in paper one. 
equation of a straight line, knowing that y equals mx plus c, and so that will be from you know looking at a graph and working out y equals mx plus c, uh, finding the equation of parallel and perpendicular lines at the, to a given line they've given you, something like that. There's, there's, there's quite a big topic, that one. Linear equations, so like solving those for x, you know, simple linear equation, unknown on one or both sides. Identity questions, so that's like the super equals with three lines in. Uh, just take care of those sort of questions that you are not trying to solve them like you would a, a, an equation, but you're just working on one side at a time and making it look more like the other. Simplification of algebraic fractions. Yep, it's a big topic. Again, it's one of those ones that I think if you're struggling on it, then check out my exam question compilation on that one. Simplification, so like multiplying out brackets, uh, collecting like terms, um, cancelling factors, top and bottom, and fractions, things like that. Factorization of a quadratic, so taking a quadratic expression, breaking it into two brackets, you know, so yeah, pretty, pretty common, pretty common question. Changing the subject, so rearranging formula, so you know, you might get a, an equation and a formula given in terms of y, you need to rearrange it, make x a subject. Recognizing graphs, so can you spot what is a linear graph, a quadratic graph, a reciprocal curve, a cubic curve, what's the other one? Uh, exponential curve. Okay, they're the ones you need to know about. Sketching functions. So if I gave you the name of a graph, would you be able to draw a kind of a basic sketch of it, its features and its basic shape? Speed time and distance, I suppose. I don't know if that means speed time graph. Inequality regions. So inequality regions is where you've got uh, more than one linear equation plotted on a graph and you need to work out which region is uh, like all, uh, you know, satisfies all the various inequalities. Um, interpreting graphs, that's, a, that's about finding roots of, of graphs, turning points, those sort of things. Algebraic sequences, okay, UN plus one uh, from UN, that sort of thing, okay and finding nth terms perhaps. Next up, geometry. Now, congruence. So knowing that uh, two shapes are congruent if they have exactly the same size and angles. Um, knowing your rules for congruency for triangles. So side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and RHS, uh, and those sort of things. Prisms. So being able to work out the volume of prisms finding the volume of a prism by using the area of the cross section times the distance between the front and the back face. Uh, knowing about the faces of shapes, not exactly sure what they mean by that. Maybe maybe how to draw nets and things, I'm not quite sure. Exact trigonometric values, so knowing your table of sine 0, 30, 45, 60 and 90 and cosine and tan as well. Uh, no, nothing, no way around that. You just got to remember those tables. There are some tricks to it, uh, but you know, you got to learn them. Finding a sector of a circle. So knowing that a sector of a circle is the fraction of the circle uh, using the angle at the center. Then you find the angle at the center, put it over 360, and you multiply it through by the area of a circle formula, pi r squared. Um, not so hard. Uh, vector geometry. That's quite a tough one. That one. Uh, so that's like moving around the shape using vectors you've been given, maybe doing some proofs that uh, three points are collinear or two sides of your shape are parallel, those sort of questions. And then constructions, regions. So doing using perpendicular bisectors, angle bisectors and circles and things like that to include, you know, to find certain regions that fit certain loci or rules, okay? Uh, so you make sure you've got a compass and you know how to use it. On to probability, Venn diagrams. Oh, I love a Venn diagram. So often these questions ask you to populate it first. They give you some numbers you have to put in to complete it. And then you have to kind of work out some probabilities, you know, selecting the number in one region over compared to the whole thing or a, another region. Uh, tree diagrams. So, um, I don't know if that means dependent or independent probability, but you've got multiple branches, don't you? Um, you have to kind of work out the probabilities going along, and you might then need to combine different routes through your probability uh, tr uh, tree diagram uh, to find your answer. 
expected value, knowing that, so for instance, the probability of success is a quarter, then in 100 trials, you'd be expected to get 25 successes just by multiplying your probability by the number of trials. And independent events, so knowing that if two events are independent, then the outcome of one doesn't affect the other, and to be able to kind of work out combined probabilities based on independent events. Okay. Finally, we've got statistics, a very, very slim category here, just cumulative frequency. So knowing how to work out cumulative frequency from a frequency table, knowing how to plot those points on a graph using the upper class value against cumulative frequency. It doesn't mention medians and quartiles, but you know, probably on the safe side, better know how to find the median and uh, your interquartile range from a cumulative frequency curve. Okay. So that's it really. Yeah, don't forget to look below for uh, examples of each of these sorts of questions that I've picked out from previous videos and also from the exam question compilations that I've made. Okay, see you on the next video. Don't forget that the best revision for these exams is to go through all the past papers from previous years. The advanced information really doesn't change that. Here's a link to all the past paper walkthroughs I've done. Uh, there, there's a link below each video where you can download the paper. If you work through all of those before your final exams, there will be really few surprises for you on the day. Good luck and see you on the next video.